All right, we're good to go here. All right, this is Dave with the Penhody Project, and I am going to put together a quick video on how I fly with a firearm. This is something I get asked about quite often, just thought we would put something together, kind of letting you know exactly how I do it, and maybe it'll help some of you guys avoid some confusion and make sure that you arrive to your destination with your shotgun, hopefully. We'll start from the top looking at airfare. Typically, I find that six to eight weeks is the best time to start looking for that airfare. And when you're looking for the uh, ticket prices, also take into consideration that some of these airlines really like to nickel and dime you when it comes to the baggage fees. So take that into consideration. I like to fly Delta. They've always been uh, really good to me. I've never had any huge issues. Uh, I've heard really good things about Southwest. Um, United is a big airline as well, but I've had some pretty rocky situations with them. So I kind of try to avoid uh, them as a whole. You can look at, um, you know, Frontier and Spirit or two airlines, but they're going to charge you to wear a hat and chew gum. If, you know, if you try to get on the plane with either one of those, they really try to, you know, nickel and dime you to get anything on that plane. So I typically steer away from those. One other nugget of information that you might want to consider when you're shopping around for that airfare, really early flights or really late flights. Really early flights, I've had a couple bad situations pop up because those agents, those TSA agents that are required to take that gun down to the uh, down to the belly of the plane, sometimes I guess they just haven't had their coffee yet early in the morning. So typically if I'm flying really early, I'm trying to like, you know, talk up my trip, let them know that I'm going on a hunting trip and how important it is for that gun to show up. You know, not be bossy, but just let them know, you know, you gotta be friendly because these people could really uh, be a thorn in your side if they decide that they don't like you. And then you wanna make sure that you try to avoid the last flight given by an airline. A lot of times I'll be taking a later flight because I wanna get a full day of work so I don't have to use a vacation day just for a travel day. What you gotta be careful about there is if something happens and they do misplace your gun, they don't have another flight after yours, so they can't get in touch with who, wherever you came from and tell them to put that bag on the next flight. If you have the next to last flight, and say you land and they notice that your gun's not there, they can get that gun on the next flight coming from wherever you came from to your destination. So you could be just looking at a couple hour holdup versus a whole day worth of holdup. Only reason I'll tell you this is because I've learned through experience. Sometimes it's just not a possibility to be picky about your flights and departures and arrivals and all that kind of thing. So you just kind of got to put your butt in the seat and cross your fingers. But if you have the flexibility of choosing a departure time, then that's just something to consider. So the next thing you're for sure going to need is a hard case. The case needs to have locking latches like you see here, or it needs to have loops in at least two locations on the case so that you can put your own locks on there. I have an SKB, actually what I have is a double bow case, and I'll do that for several different reasons. I'll just kind of brush the surface here. I do that because it's larger and allows me to put more stuff in the case with the shotgun. You're already gonna have to pay that checked bag fee to ship the shotgun, so you might as well get you the most bang for your buck and fill that thing to the 50 pound limit. Gotta keep it below 50 pounds or they wanna really tack on some fees. I'll add clothing, boots, whatever, make sure you put your pruners, your skinning knives, any kind of sharp objects in there. Do not put your lithium batteries in there. That has to go in your carry-on. That's why I like to have a bigger case. One other thing that I have to do because I do use a double bow case from SKB is I have to break down my shotgun. I have a compact shotgun, so it's shorter than most and I can wedge it in there from corner to corner. But typically what I'll do is I'll break it down into two pieces. I do that for a couple different reasons. First off, I get to kind of weasel it around in that case and put it between good padding and it also allows me like you know like i said more flexibility to put more stuff in there the second reason i found it kind of makes the whole process go a little smoother we have to take into consideration that the agents that we are dealing with may not be so comfortable with guns we're comfortable with guns we own guns some of these people don't so when you walk up to them and you declare a firearm which is something you're going to have to do I can see some fear kind of creep into their eyes and quickly they'll ask you, is the firearm unloaded? That is the first thing they ask you. I don't know if it's out of fear. I'm assuming it's protocol. But anyways, they'll ask you if the gun is unloaded and I say yes and I typically follow that with, it's also disassembled. It's in a couple different pieces. And oftentimes I can see that that adds 
a sense of calmness over them. I can watch that fear kind of fade from their eyes and it just seems to make the whole process go a little smooth. Some people don't like breaking their guns down. They don't like showing up and having to assemble their gun. I've never had an issue with my sights being off or point of aim, point of impact being different. Um, the gun goes together one way, so I don't figure that can be a huge issue. But if you don't, you're more than welcome to get a case that accommodates your gun's length. Everything else will kind of fall into place. There shouldn't be any big changes as far as the way I do things and the way you would do things with your gun assembled. All right, this next thing is a biggie. This is something that could potentially keep you out of some interesting conversations at the airport. Keep you out of a bind, in other words. It's kept me out of a few binds after I got into a bind and I had to learn this the hard way. Anyway, go to TSA's website, Transportation Security Administration, and print off hunting and fishing equipment. This is gonna have the rules and regulations and laws and all that govern how you can fly with your firearm. It's gonna be gravy for you. The biggest gray area I have found with the agents is ammunition. That's something that they're not real sure about. I'm assuming they've all been briefed on the firearms and flying with firearms. They know the procedure, but it always seems like where I've run into trouble is flying with the ammunition. The ammunition is supposed to go in the same case as your gun, in that locked hard case. The ammunition has to be in a factory box or a box specifically made for ammunition. What I have always done is just left it in a factory box. I've always kept a full box of ammunition with me when I take off and fly. For those of us who load TSS, we are our factory. So what I have found is this. I just keep a couple of these little federal boxes and as you can tell, they're well worn. They have clear tape on all the corners, but that works for me. It's a factory box, it's made for ammunition. I'll put my TSS loads in there. I'll put a, a little extra tape across the end of it and I pack them into the corner of my hard case and never had an issue. But printing this form off and leaving it in your case at all times can get you out of a bind because you can explain to the agent that this is the rules and regulations straight off their website. If she has any more questions, you contact a supervisor. He or she will get over there and get it all straightened out. Okay, so we're ready to pack the case now. Instead of using the provided interior foam, I'll just leave the shell of foam around the outside edges like the exterior, the whole of the case. I will use my clothing, like the insulated clothing usually first because it has the most padding, like this vest. I'll use like the my fleece pullovers, anything like that that I'm gonna be taking with me. Also, other things I found really nice to put inside your gun case because they're bulky and they're hard to take otherwise. Your seat cushion of your vest detaches typically and you can put that in there. That really kind of adds to the padding that your gun will have on its air, air flight, uh, which is typically gonna be a little rougher than yours, hopefully. Not in all cases, I don't guess. <clears throat> I'll put my sleeping pad in here. Uh, if I'm gonna be living out of a rental car, I'll do other things like, uh, here's another good one. Socks are really good to put inside your case because they add a lot of padding and you can put them inside these little small zippered compartments so that those socks aren't just floating around inside your case. You can get these little things off Amazon or probably just about anywhere else. But once you put those socks inside that little zippered pouch, you're basically making a little pillow. And I typically put these over the tender parts of my gun, I like to use a fast fire on my gun so that I keep that little sight pretty well contained in between something extremely cushiony. Like I may put it above my seat cushion I just put in here and then put those socks right on top of it to give it any little bit of help. The guys that throw your bug baggage around, they are typically not real nice to your luggage. They typically really don't like bigger bags. So when you start sending gun cases their way, expect them to get roughed up quite a bit in most situations. So make sure you're packing that gun in there tight. You're pinching it down so that it's not rattling around and causing any friction in there because it could cause you issues in the long run. Other things you're gonna wanna make sure that are in this gun case before you take off are things like your pruners. You try to get these in your carry-on, you will get touched in all the wrong places and probably thrown down on your head. Also, any type of knife, like this one I fend off bears and wolves with, make sure that makes it inside your gun case. Here again, I don't want anybody being inappropriately touched in the airport. And one other thing I typically like to finish off my packing of my gun case with is my sleeping bag. Typically, I'm living out of the rental car when I get there, trying to save a dollar here or two on lodging. So my sleeping bag, I have found, is obviously a very good cushion. It can be a bit tricky to get on the top of everything that you've put inside your gun case, but it is possible. 
and where else are you gonna fly with that thing? We just mentioned the ammunition and how that can be a rocky spot a lot of times when you're dealing with the agents. Tuck them down into the corner of your gun case. Put a jacket or something over them. I've found probably eight out of 10 times they don't even ask about ammunition, so I don't volunteer information. Obviously, if they ask you, you'll have to tell them and you can raise the jacket and show them. But typically, if the ammunition's not available for them to see, you just show them the gun and go on about your business. Okay, so we're all packed up. We've got everything in our case like we like it. Our gun is nice and tight in there. It's pinched between a couple good padded pieces of clothing and your sleeping bag and everything's in that gun case. You're gonna go to the airport. Now what happens? We're well, gonna roll up into your airport and typically you're gonna have to go to what they call the special services counter. I know you'll probably get emails about your airfare wanting you to check in 24 hours ahead of time. Do not do that. I've had a couple situations where I've walked in already pre-checked and I'm having to check my gun as a check bag and everything just kind of gets gray and hairy. You're gonna have to go up to that counter to check that gun and let them check it and inspect it and everything. So just wait until you get there to get your, you know, your boarding pass. It seems to just go smoother. When you get to the agent, she's gonna typically ask for a form of identification, typically your driver's license, as well as the credit card that you use to purchase the plane ticket. At that time is when you want to tell her you want to declare a firearm. That's when she's going to ask you to take the case, put it up on the little weighing scale or weighing platform, and open the case. She's going to then ask you if it's unloaded and all that good stuff we've already touched on. She's going to want to see the gun. Typically, you'll open the case, let her have a look at the gun. She's going to give you this orange card. This is the card saying that your firearm is unloaded. She's going to fill out a little part of it. She's going to put your signature on it. You're going to place that card on top of everything in your case. If you get an agent that doesn't give you one of these cards, inquire about it. I've never been to an airport with a firearm where I was not given one of these cards to sign and place inside my case. Once she gives you your boarding pass and you've paid for the checked bag and you've got that orange card inside your case, she's gonna then ask you to close the case up and lock it. At this point, lock all the locks on the case. You shouldn't have to unlock that case again. This is where it kind of gets tricky at different airports because each airport may function a little differently. Atlanta, for instance, once my case is locked, she asked me to go to oversized baggage. Just a short walk away, I haul my gun over there, tell them I have a gun and they will take the case from me, I will stand there. You are the only one with the key to the case. So it's very important that you keep yourself available for those guys in case they do need to get inside your case. If you're not available there to let them inside the case, bad things have been known to happen. So I'll stand there, they will take a little swab, go around the seam of your case, testing it for who knows what, boom boom juice or whatever they're looking for there. And they'll tell you whether you're good to go or you're not. I've never had a situation where I wasn't good to go. I have had to open that case and let them look on the inside for one reason or the other. But typically after that, it's just lock it up and you're good to go, sir, and I'm on my way to my gate. Other airports function differently. Some airports, you will have to stand there at the gate agent or just over to the side, and she will have a TSA agent come up and take the gun case. And you will just have to sit there, and typically what they're doing is taking that case back to their little layer. They're doing all that swabbing and stuff. And if they have an issue, they'll come back up there and get you. You just got to make sure you're available with that key so that they can get back in that case. If you get to a situation to where the gate agent wants to take that gun case and place it on the conveyor belt with all the other check bags and send it on its way, you need to start screaming and tell them to pump the brakes because that's where you can really get into some issues. They will find out that's a gun. And if you're not there to unlock that case, that's when they start paging you over the intercom and you're having to run from one gate to who knows where you'll miss your flight. Nightmares happen when that takes place. So make sure you make yourself available. If that agent tries to take that gun and shove it on the conveyor belt with everything else, not pitching a fit, but at least letting her know what's going on. You're dealing with an inexperienced agent if that's the case. A couple other tidbits of information I'll include here that is could potentially keep you out of trouble and I learned the hard way. When they're printing off what is called your bag tag, that basically is like a slender barcode with sticky stuff on the inside and they'll slip it through the handle of your gun case, smack it against each other, and that tag is where that gun is going. Learn the abbreviations for each of the airports. Typically, like Atlanta's ATL, Denver's probably DNV, 
you know, Rapid City's probably RPC or something. I don't know. Learn the little abbreviations and make sure, just glance at that barcode and make sure that little abbreviation is on that barcode. That barcode is where that gun is going regardless of where you're going. So if you notice that that little abbreviation is different, call attention to it because something is something is wrong. It should be the same place you're going. It's hard to kill turkeys without a gun. And something that you might want to take care of while you're waiting in line to declare that firearm, get your boarding pass, all that good stuff, is slap some bag tags on your case in case it is lost. Typically just include your phone number and your name. I usually put one on the long end and on the wide end of my case. A great idea would be get some permanent tags. I don't have permanent tags, I probably should, but just make sure that case has got your name on it in a couple different places. So if something happens, worse comes to worse and that thing is lost, they know who it belongs to and who to contact to get it back to. Okay, so we've got the gun all checked in, TSA's done their sweep and you're good to go. You're gonna go hurry up and wait at your gate basically. And when you get on that airplane, you just keep your fingers crossed that the gun is on the airplane too. So whenever you land at your destination, wherever that may be, every airport's a little bit different, but your firearm is considered and rolls with oversized baggage. So you're gonna have to find the oversized baggage area in order to find your firearm. Typically they have a separate little office right down there by baggage claim, or they'll have a separate little conveyor belt where all the oversized baggage comes up from, or you'll see a TSA agent rolling like a little cart or trailer with the oversized bags on it. They will have to double check the bag tag that is on that oversized baggage, which is your firearm with your ID or a baggage receipt, which you'll be given when you pay to check that bag. So be sure you keep up with your bag tag receipt or just have your ID. I've never had an issue with getting my gun back just using my driver's license or whatnot. They'll double check that against the bag tag that's on the piece of luggage, which is your firearm. You take your gun and go on about your merry way. All right, guys, so I think we've touched on about everything now. We've got your airfare, what to look for there when considering baggage fees and departure times. We've went over what kind of case you're gonna need to fly with. We've walked over some of those little things like the TSA rules and regulations. We've looked at packing the gun inside the case. We've looked at going into the airport, what they're gonna ask for what you need to be ready to provide them, what the TSA agents are gonna do. We've got you off the airplane, we've now found your gun, they've let you have your gun, and now you're just off to enjoy your hunt, which I hope is extremely successful and excitement filled. Hopefully this video helped some of you, answered a few questions. If you have any more questions, just let me know, drop them in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully it helps somebody and, you will reach your destination trouble-free.